Have you ever considered using a financial roadmap to track your financial goals? Here to talk to me is Haley Talitsky from Cook Capital. Hi, Haley. Hey there, Hannah. All right. So if you want to start uh, about explaining to me what a financial roadmap is and what should be in a financial roadmap, that would be much appreciated. Absolutely. So basically, all that a financial roadmap is, is a simplified version of a financial plan that's unique to you. It's something that a lot of financial planners use with our clients just to help them set goals and track their progress along the way. And so keep in mind, everyone's financial roadmap is going to look a little bit different, but basically you're going to start at point A. And so that's where you're at today with your current financial situation, your career, your current life situation as well. And then we're going to build out the roadmap by creating steps along the way to help us get to point B. And that's where you'd like to be financially, career-wise, and with your life. And all you need to do is just create small, actionable steps along the way that's going to help you get from point A to point B. Okay, so um, what are some of the specifics that should be in this roadmap? Yeah, it's going to be different based on everyone's different situation, um, but I put a guide in the article that you can use to help you get started. Just keep in mind, you want to be really flexible with your roadmap. Um, as life changes arise, you're going to need to modify, and that's okay. And this is just a guide in the article. So yours might look very different or very similar, just depending where you're at in life. And I also want you to keep in mind your why. So what is the reason you're building this roadmap and what are your actual goals? And it's going to be different for everyone, but it might be that you want to retire early or work part time at a certain age. You might want to achieve financial freedom or be able to financially support causes or um, family members that are important to you. Or it might just be to reduce your financial stress and to just create a plan. So just keep that in mind. Again, it's different for everyone, but just get started and build it out based on your unique situation. So um, you also mentioned sinking funds. Um, could you explain a little bit more about that? I know that that's a term that's new to me. Yeah, absolutely. So in the sample guide, I create four different key areas um, along the way for your roadmap. So that starts out with budgeting. And so again, that's just understanding your cash flow. I recommend using a free budgeting app such as Mint just to help you track your spending and your income. And then from there, you can determine what you can comfortably allocate each month towards your short and long-term financial goals. And so the next step in the um, guide is to save. And so a sinking fund, basically all that is, is a different savings account for a specific goal that you might have. So it could be a wedding, it could be a down payment for a house, it could be travel, but you're just um, putting money in each month just for that specific goal that you're saving for. Um, and then additionally, you were talking about a high yield savings account, um, three to six months of living expenses. Could you elaborate more on that? Absolutely. So when we're looking at saving, the first thing we want to do is build out our emergency fund, because if we do have any debt and you an emergency arises, you're going to end up going into more debt if you don't have an adequate savings fund. So that's three to six months typically of living expenses in a high yield savings account. Um, so when you look at your bank statement, you want to see what your interest rate is or your APY rate. And um, typically right now, interest rates are so low, it's typically like 0.5%. But you want to make sure that you're in a high yield savings account just to allow your money to grow for you at least just a little bit. And I'd say my last question is, um, I recently, so uh, this is more geared towards me and my generation, um, establishing a line of credit. Um, I know that for my parents' generation, this was really important. As soon as you had your first job, you wanted to be um, getting a credit card. Um, but I've also heard that maybe that's changed a bit. How important is establishing a line of credit um, at a young age around, you know, like me, a 20 something year old? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's really important because having um, a solid credit score is just going to help you in the future, whether, you know, you need a certain auto loan or applying for a mortgage. It's really important to have a solid credit score. And so there is a link in the article under the payoff debt section where you can check your free credit score. Um, and from there, you can see if you have any outstanding debts that you need to pay off. 
And if you're new to establishing a line of credit, there's a lot of really great resources out there. There's like beginner credit cards or there's credit cards for people in college, but you wanna make sure that you're establishing that credit just for future you. Um, and make sure that you're paying off that credit card in full each month. Never carry a balance because that's going to hurt your credit score. Great. Um, I think those are all of my questions. Is there anything else you'd like to add or reiterate for this financial roadmap? Yeah, just keeping in mind that your situation is unique to you. So the guide in the article is just a guide that I created. Um, it's going to look different for everyone, but the key is just to get started. Your financial roadmap doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be complex. It just has to work for you. Great. Well, thank you so much again. This is Haley Talitsky from Cook Capital. Um, uh, Haley, thank you so much. Thank you.